This week on Salvage Squad, we've really given them something to get their teeth into. 50 tons of clapped out, rusty in old Centurion tank. Hidden away in a field not far from Luton Airport is the largest private collection of armoured vehicles in the UK. They've all been lovingly restored by tank nut Nick Meads, except one, the Centurion. The task of restoring this massive tank has fallen to the salvage squad. Axel Cleghorn, the strong yet sensitive mechanic who can always be relied on for the subtle approach. <laughs> Jerry Thurston, the classic car obsessive and engine freak. And Claire Barrett, the level-headed steam engineer. The squad get their first look at this week's restoration, and it's a monster. Oh dear. There's, there are three people who look like they're beaten. You look like you're going up against Tyson. Big. Very big. In need of some restoration. Just a little bit. It's, it's 50 tonnes in weight. That's what you're dealing with. Anybody ever put a tank together before? Airfix. Airfix? I did have a model Centurion did when you? I was a kid. I did. It could be Nick, our owner. I'm well, going to give it. you five minutes to give it to once over. I'm going to go and have a little chat All with right, him. Mate, right, right. Enjoy yourselves. OK. There you go, Nick. Hey, Lee. How are you going? Nice to meet you. Nick, why have you got a field full of tanks? Well, it's just my business now. I used to be a kind of local butcher. and uh, What, you know, a warlord? <laughs> no, <laughs> getting that way. Um, I just fancied a tank one day instead of a classic car. I used to mess around with old cars, but was always fighting the rust and um, just got bored with them. And I saw this tank advertised and I thought, what a lot you get for your money. And then, so you're the butcher with the self-propelled gun? Yeah, and then someone tried to hire it off me for the day, and they paid me basically half what I'd paid for it for the day. Nick now earns his bacon running tank driving courses and hires his tanks out for film work. He's even flogged two of them to Steven Spielberg. Got a Centurion here. When did it come out of the army then? Um, you know? I've had her about four years. It was a sort of a mistake, really. I didn't know much about Centurions, and I thought I'd have one anyway. It was an MOD sale, and um, it's a bit of a big white elephant. Can I ask how much? Or do you uh, want to keep that quiet? No, it was three or four grand, I think. I've had it a long while, but um, it's an old beauty. When you say old, how old are we talking? That would be made early 50s. It actually saw service in the Gulf War, and they called it the Antique Roadshow. <laughs> that yeah. tank was in that the Gulf was in War? in the Gulf War, yeah. Hang on a minute, so 50s... Now I'm 40 years old. Well, it's a special kind of tank. There's probably only four or five left in the world now. The Centurion is a thoroughbred amongst tanks. During the Second World War, the lightly armoured British tanks were no match for the German panzers. Tank commanders were desperate for a heavily armoured tank with a decent gun. Eventually, the British came up with the Centurion, just as the war ended. It first saw action during the Korean War in 1950. It may have been late, but the Centurion was just what the tank commanders wanted. The Centurion last saw action in the Gulf War in 1991. As a tribute to over 40 years of service, Nick wants to restore our tank to its Gulf War condition. So you're looking to get it back up to the, the Gulf yeah, War spec. Yeah, so I want it to Gulf War spec. Ten years ago. What do you think about the salvage squad, though? Do you think they've got a chance? They're uh, pouring over it as we speak. I think they have picked the hardest tank possibly in the world to do, and I've spent hours and hours, and I'm still going downhill on it. Everyone wants to see the old girl running again, but no-one's kind of rolling their sleeves up, apart from you fools, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just do a walk around, then. The squad's first task is to find out what's wrong with the tank. Tracks, mate. Wheels, tracks. Paintwork. Uh, engine. But look at the size of it. I mean, I look know, at this. it's huge. It's monstrous. They divide the tank into three main areas the turret and the main gun, the engine, which sits behind the turret, and finally, the tracks and wheels. Have we got all the parts to actually fix all this? No, it is. Friend, Jerry. Friend, this is Nick. He owns, he owns the beast. <laughs> All right. Axel, you've got your red book there. Yes, I have, mate. Have you made copious notes? Yes. That well-known gladiator. What's wrong with it? Obviously, it needs a clean. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of gardening, because I saw there's <laughs> yeah, forest know. up there. <laughs> what else we got? Um, cupboard, yeah, all these cupboards, this stuff has to be come up. I mean, how far, what, what kind of like? level we're we looking at? Well, we've got to do it good. So we've got to get all that paint off? 
anything that's loose has got to be seriously scratched off. It's it just needs, there's, a, there's a load of things. A centurion is trouble. It's all right, we've got tracks, we've got wheels. The squad have jotted down a list of tasks needed to bring the beast back to life. Get the engine running. Remove all the rust and repaint it in desert colours. Restore the interior of the tank. Repair the tracks and wheels. And refit its Gulf War armour. It's a truly mammoth task, and Nick wants it all complete in time for one of Britain's biggest military shows. We've got about, what was we saying, about a couple of weeks? Two weeks, yeah. Hold on, let's do it here. Okay. Oh my life! There's no time to waste, so the squad hit their number one priority, the engine. If that doesn't run, the tank's going nowhere. It's the sort of engine that screams Jerry. Oh yeah. Jerry's passion is restoring classic cars. He's tinkered with many engines in his time, but he's never seen anything like this. He's face to face with one of Britain's most historic engines. The tank's engine is a Meteor, a version of the legendary Merlin engine that powered the Spitfire. The development of the Merlin by Rolls-Royce was crucial in giving Spitfires the edge over German fighter aircraft. So when the designers of the Centurion were looking for a powerful yet compact engine, the Merlin was the obvious choice. 24 litres of V12X aircraft engine. That's why I'm here to play with this. I mean, it's just sheer blessed joy. Hear this roar, I'll be a happy boy. It may be historic, but this engine hasn't run in over four years. To make sure it's even safe to start, Jerry gives it a detailed inspection. He checks the fuel lines for blockages and makes sure the electrics are clean and dry. With a bit of luck, that's all Jim will need to bring it back to life. While Jerry gets stuck in, I start my quest to find out more about the tank's history. Nick, has it got a, a name or a number? It has got a registration. It's 01ZR15. 01ZR15? Yeah. ZR denotes its year. I'm bound to forget that. You're going to have to write that down for me. But if yep. you do... I'll take that away with me and see if I can find out any of the, I was going to say former owners, but it'd be former drivers, yeah. wouldn't it, of it, I suppose, former crew. Yeah, now, I've tried to do that and I haven't had much success. I'd love to meet some people who, um, who drove it and, and served on it and everything else. It'd be well interesting. And if any tank that I've got is going to have it, it's going to be this one, because it is so old, it's seen so much service. Claire, do you know what buttons to press? I'm here. The question is, has the engine seen too much service to ever run again? Not it, is it? It's stuttering, yeah. but if that was going to go, that would have gone. Right. Do you see you what I mean? Do not want to try it once more? Yeah, spin it once more, to one more time. Yeah. But I don't want to wet it up, though. Yeah, don't worry. It's dead. Dead. Jerry starts trying to hunt down the problem. The battery's obviously OK because the engine's turning. Petrol is getting through. So Jerry reckons the problem must be with the engine's 50-year-old electrics. You need two things to start a petrol engine. Firstly, just the right mix of petrol and air squirted into the engine. Secondly, you need a great big spark to light the petrol. But the Meteor's antiquated electrics don't produce a big enough spark to start the engine. Jerry's had an ingenious idea to replace the old electrics with a modern electronic ignition from a Jaguar sports car. Do you know what my instant thought is? What's that? Another V12. Jaguar? Well, yeah. Jerry starts by removing the old electrics from the engine. The old system is called a magneto. The magneto is a mechanical device that needs to spin fast to generate the sparks. The problem is, at start-up, the massive Meteor engine turns over very slowly and the magneto doesn't spark. Jerry's modern electronic ignition gives a good spark, whatever the engine needs. The beauty of it is, is no matter how slowly the spark system is turning, it develops the same big whack of electricity. So I've rigged this little kit up here with essentially what is the ignition system from a Jaguar with its battery, with the electronics box, with a coil, and if you imagine this here, there's a spark plug within the engine. No matter how slowly I move this across, 
you can even hear the spark banging into the cylinder. And that's almost certain to fire our tank engine, hopefully first time. It's a brilliant idea in theory, but Bright Spark Jerry now has to work out how to cram the electronic ignition into the casing of the old magneto. While the squad were battling to get the Centurion ready for the show, my mission was to track down a tank's history and trace some of the men who had served in it. Armed with the tank's serial number, I went to visit tank historian Simon Dunstan. Now Simon, we've got a Centurion tank that we're trying to put back together. It's in a pretty rusty state mm -hmm. at the moment and it's, um, I've, I was giving it on a little bit of paper, 01ZR5. And I wondered if you could uh, tell us a bit more about it. Sure, we've done a bit of research and what we found so far is that it was built in March 1950, well that was the date it came into service. So it could have gone to the Korean War, later it would have been modified into a Mark V. Now Mark Vs were used in Sueys. In 1956, the Egyptians decided the Suez Canal, which ran through their country, should belong to them. Britain and France thought otherwise. And in what is seen as a last gasp of empire, troops were sent in to try and regain control of the canal. So there you have them landing during the early days of the invasion. Yeah. So what are we looking for? We're looking for O1ZR. One, five. So you might actually have the... Right, then we've got O2ZR, so we're getting in the same area. Hang on, what have we got here? Well, initially it's a horse and car at the front. <laughs> but yeah, there you go, you've got so O1ZR15. Oh my god, there it is. Using Simon's amazing collection of photos, we'd established that our tank had definitely served in the Suez conflict. The research was going well. Meanwhile, Jerry finishes his electronic wizardry. All he has to do now is fit it back onto the engine. It's just a pig to get underneath it, isn't it? The magneto is attached to the back of the engine. Yeah. Now, Jerry and Axel are working blind. Now, I can reach the bolts my side. Yep. Yeah. Can you see that bolt there? Yeah? Where? Just there, where my finger is, yes? That's a... Uh, he's fitting the magneto, but there's some nuts he can't reach from his side. So I had to loosen up some nuts, tighten them up from this side. That's very cramped working conditions. Yeah. And a big old jerry in a little hole, it doesn't really work. I'm certainly intimate with this engine now. Can you see that bolt there? Can you... Uh, yeah, Can you deal with that? There you go, done. Oh, good lad. That's it. Well done. Oh. The electrics are on, but will they work? You ready, Claire? Yeah, I'm here. That's it. Axel pumps petrol into the engine. That's it. Lovely. Happy. Right, ready? Here we go. Don't want to go. No, she don't want to go. It seems that the problem with the engine isn't the electrics after all. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. 